First at four, a former state trooper breaks down in court. But he said to the judge just before being sentenced in that ATV crash that killed a teenager. Also remembering a civil rights legend, we honor Judge Damon J. Keith with the story of a woman who's the great granddaughter of slaves. Her memories of his groundbreaking legacy, Ben. Just downright ugly out there today, Karen. Temperatures didn't get out of the 40s in some spots, but this is the last day that we'll be able to say this for the next 10. That's right now, First at Four. Live from downtown Detroit, Local 4 News First at Four starts now. Good afternoon, I'm Karen Drew. First at Four starts with regrets, tears, and a prison sentence. It was an emotional day in court as a former MSP trooper is sentenced in the death of a Detroit teenager. The judge sentenced Mark Bessner to five to 15 years in prison. Last month, Bessner was convicted of involuntary manslaughter for the death of Damon Grimes. Bessner shocked Grimes with a taser during a high-speed chase. Grimes died after his ATV crashed into a car. We heard from the Grimes family and Bessner himself. To know we will never hear him laugh again. There will be no more hugs and kisses from him. The smile that was right at the room. We will never see him again. I am sorry. I think about it every day. And if there were a time machine I could go, that I could jump into and go back and change that outcome, I would. But I can't. Today's sentencing comes after conviction in Bessner's second trial. The first ended with a hung jury last year. It's not often you say goodbye to a legal legend and civil rights icon like federal judge Damon J. Keith. He died late last month, and today he was honored during a homegoing celebration. And Paula Tutman spoke with many people who say they are what they are today because of the judge's service on the bench. When you are the great granddaughter of slaves, your walk to say goodbye to a jurist such as Judge Damon J. Keith is different. A simple question, what might you be without the service of this one man? I would probably be a maid or a housekeeper. Because of him, I'm able to get my degrees and work in academia where these doors were not open to us before that. The homegoing, a walk through history. To say the name Judge Damon J. Keith is to be encouraged not to forget that there was a time not so long ago that if you were black, you could not go to school with white children. This was the world Judge Keith was born into in 1922. They believed still, even though it had already been removed from the books, that you are three-fifths of a human being. But not the one he left at age 96 as the longest serving judge on the bench of the Sixth Circuit. Our lives have been improved because of his leadership on and off the bench. His 52 years of rulings touch us still. Judge Keith, who at the height of the popularity and the power of the Nixon administration, stood up and said, the Constitution prevails. I'd have had some heels to climb. No more speaking for the last, the lost, and the left out. It was his hands on the scales of justice that leveled the playing field for so many. And I recognize that the space that I occupy in part is because of the sacrifices of individuals like Judge Keith. He just deeply believed that all human beings had a right to fairness and equality. Yes, he was eulogized by many at Hartford Memorial Church this morning. He never wavered in his crusade to make sure that not just black people, but that all people were entitled to receive equal justice under the law. But everyone in attendance would say they lead the life they lead because of the rulings of Judge Damon J. Keith. And I just believe that with people like Judge Keith, we are able to move into our places in society where we would have never been able to go before. Yes, indeed. Uh, it was a history lesson, but also keep in mind that Judge Keith was a family man of three daughters, and certainly the eulogy of uh, his daughter Cecile gave us some of the more tender moments, and I've saved that part for you for 5 o'clock, so I'll see you then. All right, sounds good. Thank you, Paula.
An investigation is underway right now after two people are shot in Clinton Township. It happened at an apartment complex on Lipke Street near Gratiot. Police say it started as an argument between a man and a woman. We're told the couple was struggling for a gun when it went off, hitting them both. Right now we don't have an update on their injuries. We also have a local four update on a body that was found in the Detroit River over the weekend. Michigan State Police say that body was found was that of a missing 49 year old by the name of Patrick Fitzgerald. Last night, a fisherman found Fitzgerald floating in the water in Wyandotte. The Coast Guard says the body had been in the water for some time. Police say Fitzgerald went missing last November. Their investigation continues. University of Michigan will need a new basketball coach as John Beeline is headed to the NBA. He has agreed to a five-year deal to be the coach of the Cleveland Cavaliers. Today, he tweeted a message of thanks to Michigan fans. He wrote, quote, it has been a heck of a ride, and I hope you enjoyed our teams as much as I did. Go blue forever. And we're gathering reaction from the campus, including the impact Beeline had on the team. Our coverage continues at 5 and 6. In our first forecast, we've been waiting all day for that sun to appear, Ben, but it feels more like March than May. When are we going to get out of this rut? This does not look good, Karen. Uh, shot at Corktown, I mean, the train station looks fantastic, but the clouds are out there. And yes, we have not really seen any appreciable sunshine. Look at some of these temperatures. Metro were at 54, and that is the warm spot right now. There are some spots that are in the 40s. You add to that a north wind at 15 miles an hour, and this does not feel like the middle of May. We should be seeing temperatures in the upper 60s at this time of the year. But temperatures tonight are going to be falling into the 40s for everybody. We will see some clearing, but it's going to be happening overnight uh, before a lot of us will get to see that. Tomorrow brings the sunshine back, and just wait till you see these temperatures in the back half of the forecast. All that coming up in a few minutes. Karen. All right. Thank you, Ben. We do have some breaking news from Wall Street this Monday afternoon and the White House. Take a look. Markets have been jumpy all day long. The Dow Jones plunged more than 700 at one point. Right now you see it's down 617. China trade fears have been rattling investors for a week now. Earlier today, China struck back after President Trump increased tariffs on many Chinese products last Friday. China will now boost tariffs on $60 billion worth of American goods. Tariffs of 5 to 25 percent will take effect in June, starting June 1st, actually, on about 5,200 American products. The products include batteries, spinach, and coffee. Mr. Trump plans to meet with China's president at the G20 summit in late June, but that's weeks away. At the White House this afternoon, the president continues the tough talk. We have the right to do another $325 billion at 25 percent in additional tariffs. Uh, that is a tremendous amount of money that would come into our country. I have not made that decision yet. Both countries have indicated more trade talks are likely, but nothing's been scheduled before that G20 summit. Local 4 is staying on top of breaking news over in Boston, and that's where one of the most prominent defendants in a college admission scandal just entered her guilty plea. Kimberly Gill joins us with the latest on actress Felicity Huffman in a federal courtroom today. Hi, Karen. Good afternoon. Huffman is an Emmy-winning actress for her role in the TV series Desperate Housewives, but her appearance today in federal court was not acting. It is a real-life thing that's going on here. We're told she broke down in court as she pleaded guilty to charges of conspiracy to commit mail fraud and what's called honest services mail fraud. Huffman appeared at the courthouse without commenting there. Uh, the 56-year-old actress was arrested in a nationwide sting and charged with paying $15,000 to a college admissions consultant to rig her daughter's SAT score. Huffman is one of more than a dozen parents pleading guilty along with the consultant who masterminded the scheme that brought him millions of dollars. She says her daughter did not know about this elaborate scheme. Now, in exchange for the guilty plea, prosecutors are recommending a sentence for, Huff for Huffman of four months in prison. A judge could choose no prison time at all or could give her more prison time. Huffman will be sentenced, though, at a later date. So, Karen, more details from the courtroom coming up tonight on Local 4 News at 5. Until then, and we'll send it back to you. All right, we'll see you at 5, Kim. Thank you. Hollywood has lost one of the legendary stars of the 1950s and 60s. Doris Day has died in California. You might recall Day from classic movies like Pillow Talk and Touch of Mink. She was known for her bubbly comedic roles and became a symbol of wholesome American womanhood. She also when sang songs like Hey Sarah Sarah, which is in the Grammy Hall of Fame and won an Academy Award for Best Original Song. 
They left showbiz to advocate for animal rescue. She died after a serious case of pneumonia. Doris Day was 97 years old. Still head first at four, it's one of the creepiest stories we have heard connected to Craigslist. Animal lovers will be outraged. And he's been on the run for 23 years. Investigators say he sexually assaulted young girls he babysat. A surprising twist in this unsolved mystery right after the break. And later, it is the great hamburger debate. Who makes the best burgers in Metro Detroit? If you have an opinion, and really everybody seems to have one, you definitely want to hear about our burger bracket coming up. Stay with us. I don't take it lightly when you want to share your story. I hold people accountable, I stand up for others, stop the bullying, and hopefully make positive change.